So my name is Bunny. Oh, my name is Bunny. <laughs> uh, my blog is called The Bunny Hole, and uh, what we do is we talk a lot of positive things. It's a positive platform for people who, um, like artists who don't have exposure, or for artists who are already exposed and then they maybe you know want to show a different side of them, a different you know get to know the artists instead of just what they allow us to see. Um, I also provide a platform for entrepreneurs to kind of. Spread the word. It's enough gossip columns. There's enough drama out there. I really try to stay away from all of that. You know, I really kind of hone in on what we are, you know, as a community and what we put out so I just can see. Okay. Okay. So that's a little bit about me. I'm Bunny. Clearly the bunny hole. Yeah. <laughs> Hopping in the bunny hole, you got the piece here, the bunny ear. So you got to do the bunny ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just tell me a little bit about you. Uh, tell me, you know, for my followers who may not know you are not familiar with me. Uh, when you introduce yourself and then just tell me about your brand. Okay, my name is Angelo Austin. I am the CEO and the fragrance designer for all these lovely fragrances you see right here. Um, I got into it because originally I love the way women smell. We enter a uh, fourth fragrance now, one of them isn't here. So we enter our fourth major fragrance now. This is called Floral Fixation. We okay. got a release party for that coming up also. Mm -hmm. um, so we put a lot into that and we do have the commercial for that on YouTube. So check that out, Floral Fixation number two, starring Tiffany Langford. All right, all right. So with your line, um, did it start out as a hobby? You said you like just like how women smell. So you just started like, you know what? I want to see how this smells on her. And like you know what? Hobby. Like, you know, anytime, especially women I dated or even my mother, sister, anybody like that, I would always buy them perfume as gifts. Mm -hmm. And um, anytime I would really want to went into Macy's and um, you know some of those big retail stores, I just really wanted to get into that. But I thought it was just too much to compete with them. You know, so that's when, after a while, you know, time went on or whatever like that. And I just really decided to get into it um, after I got kicked out of nursing school once. So I decided <laughs> to get into it or whatever and, um, you know, really learn how to do it. So that, that was kind of really my um, start with it. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, with you getting kicked out of nursing school, uh, did you learn any valuable lessons in that? Uh, no, I, <laughs> the most valuable lessons I learned in that was the uh, human sense of smell. Okay. So that was my most valuable lesson I learned in that. And then once I actually learned that, I learned how not even, um, you know, just how we smell, but how our taste buds affect smell. You know, how the stuff that you do in your diet, you know, that affects the type of smells that you like. Mm -hmm. Typically, I'm kind of known for, I'm mostly known for custom fragrances, but okay. I can easily tell what kind of fragrance a, a woman would like just from her diet. Oh, okay. So I like, um. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um seasons. Okay. <clears throat> what seasons? Seasonless? Seasonless, because a lot of that is, um, like you got rosemary, thyme. A lot of those are different types okay. of oils that's in that. So. Usually what I typically do when I get a client in, the first thing, one of the first things I go over besides allergies is their diet, mm -hmm. you know, so okay. that's a big indicator with a lot of stuff. Right, because um, from me being a woman wearing a lot of perfumes, I notice that sometimes my natural scent doesn't always mix well with, you know, and that, with a certain style. And that comes with diet too. Okay. Um, a lot of that is diet based, because if you even look at the way you eat, okay, they did a uh, study um, before, if you actually rub the garlic, on your peak, on your foot, you would actually taste it about five to ten minutes later. No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> you no, know, it, it just shows yeah. that whatever you put on the outside, on the outside of your body, transforms to the inside of your body, and vice versa. So a lot of times, if you do eat, like you know, like say for instance, if you have a certain diet of that composed of fish and all that type of stuff okay. like that, and this person has a like a vegan type of diet or something like that, the fragrance will smell different on both of you. Okay. You know, so yeah. Now, you know, we live in, we are in Detroit, and in Detroit you always see someone that's, you know, promoting oils or selling oils or selling scents. You know, it's not always in a storefront or anything like that. Mm -hmm. What's something that sets you apart from those people? What is it about your brand that, you know, that you're not the guy on the corner, you're not the guy, you know, in the movies, you know, like, hey, hey girl, mm -hmm. hey girl. Well, it's obvious, it just looks better. Gonna... <laughs> and it smells better. But no, outside of that, um, not even only that, uh, one of the most unique things that separate me even from the major brands mm -hmm. um, is the fact that I do custom fragrances. Okay. So I can build it just like that. We're even about to get into um, where you can get your bottle customized. Oh, like okay. say for instance, if you wanted to come in and get you know, your face as a bottle, mm -hmm. you know, I'm about to even get that advanced to going to that level with it. So that's one thing that um, you know separates us from the big, you know, um, the big retailers or mm -hmm. whatever. But far as like the the guy on the street and stuff like that or whatever, mm -hmm. we just put a lot into our packaging. That's kind of like my number one thing is packaging and presentation. 
and quality, and not even only that, educating my consumers. I do have a um, blog also called scentfacts.com, to okay. where it's kind of it's educating you on the way you smell and the way you perceive smell. Okay, okay, definitely um, something that we'll look out for as far as your custom. You know, I, I want to see my face on the bottom. Yeah. I, I have no problem looking at my face on the bottom. You know, I know probably everybody else is not. Yeah. I'm, like, ah, nah, I'm not touching that. Um, okay, so explain your brands, uh, the the ones that you have for me. Um, if you could go okay. like by name, actually, just I'm, gonna let you, I'm gonna let you see. Oh, okay, okay. This right here is orgasm. Okay, this so, is my number one seller. You know what? Uh, this is the bunny hole mm -hmm. holding mm -hmm. orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what's the best place to spray it? The best place to spray it really is on pulse points. Pulse, pulse points, points because they generate heat. When it okay. generates heat, you smell it more. Okay. We're gonna try this one. Okay, it smells good. It smells. It's like a very fruity. It's a. I don't know. Maybe it's I a little bit. It's a little bit of coconut in that, but that's mainly a marine type of style of. Oh, it has uh, a good after scent to it. Yeah, it's the after scent, and that's uh, like deep vanilla with that in the after scent. That is more of an oriental style fragrance. Just okay. that fall in the um, in the category like flower bombs and stuff like that. Okay, that smells great. What what inspired the name orgasm? Is it or is it, <laughs> is it just something you like? You know what? Uh. <laughs> you know what? And and I originally the bottle was supposed to be different. It was actually supposed to be shaped like fallopian tubes, but um. Um, Not, okay. <laughs> but right. outside, but outside of that, um, what inspired the name behind that? I just thought it was something catchy, and so once I actually started designing the fragrance, I actually started kind of looking up aphrodisiacs, okay. uh, which is one of the main notes in every vanilla. And vanilla is one of the main aphrodisiacs. It's, it's mm -hmm. uh, vanilla and chocolate is actually, um, you know, big aphrodisiac. So it's true, chocolate is aphrodisiac. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the so next, we got or next, next, Actually, next I'm gonna say the best for last. Okay. All right, right now I'm about to get you charisma. All right, charisma. Yeah. That is actually my daughter's name. Is it? Yes, and it's spelled the same way, with uh, a cat. Yeah. yeah, I had to do something a little different. <laughs> That one right there, that's more so, that was made because I really wanted to get that vintage look. You okay. Know, um, I wanted to go back to that vintage look where it was Hollywood, make a woman kind of feel like she was. Yeah, it's got the, what yeah. is it called? What is it called? What is that's Automizer. Oh, okay, Automizer, Automizer. Automizer. Yeah. okay. So I really wanted that, that's more of a fruity, that's more of a fruity type of scent right there. Okay, um, can I spray this? Spray I, I, I kind of just spray stuff, so am I gonna? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna start stinking in a minute. No, you, you, know, you can't have to stink first. But you can kind of even smell it through the bottle okay. if you want to. Um, yeah, I don't want to mess it up. Oh no, you are fine. Okay. That's more of a fruity. You got a lot of mango okay, scent. Okay, yeah, I was about to say This something reminds me of islands, and you know, uh, if I was on a beach somewhere or something, okay. I would kind of spray just to, you know, get ready. Like I'm that. on vacation. I'm on a, yeah. You know, do one of those. Okay. And what is this in here with it? This that's is lotion. That's the lotion. Oh, okay, yeah. the body lotion. Yeah, okay. that's the body lotion right there. Okay. Yeah, the more you moist, keep your skin moisturized, the more the scent holds in on it. Okay, so it's better to mix the lotion and the... And it's the, better to mix the lotion and that, or if you don't mix that lotion, unscented Vaseline. Anytime you put moisturize your skin, oh, unscented, Vaseline. unscented okay. Vaseline, that holds the scent in. Okay, I love this. Thank I love you. this. Oh, maybe because it's Yeah, that was my, my second one. Yeah, this is my daughter's <laughs> name, so I'm gonna have to, you know, be like, hey, baby. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what else we got? Now, this one right here is... Dun, 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 dun. The best thing <laughs> of mankind. This is floral fixation. Okay. Right here. Now this is my latest fragrance. We actually got a release party coming up for this yes. at the D Loft um, in a few months. Okay. Oh, this is a. Okay. Yep. Now mm. it's a little. It's not. It's not the same fruity as the other two. It has more of a. I don't, I don't know, I don't want to say sandalwood, but it's like a, a, it's, it's a misty smell. It's sandalwood in there, but that's more of a floral, a floral okay. oriental style. That's kind of my style, I like sweet okay. oriental type of smells, but that's more floral in that. You got the iris flower that really blooms, start okay. blooming in August or whatever. That's why I wanted to put the release party in September. Um, because that, yeah, that's the popular, um, thank you. That's the popular note in there is iris, black, currant, and, uh, we have saddle wood and vanilla and it's a whole bunch of other more stuff. Okay. So floral fixation was there, you know, is this a uh, riding along the lines with orgasm? Is Not it? really. You know what? <laughs> Most of my fragrances I designed by color. Okay. So really like I get an idea of a color in my head mm -hmm. and then I smell stuff and then it, it reminds me of that color and then that's when I actually design the packaging and everything like that. Okay. And sometimes it goes the opposite way. Sometimes I smell certain scents that I like mm -hmm. and then I go ahead and actually design the packaging around it. All around the scent, yeah. okay. And typically like it, it's funny because most women that um, purchase the perfume or whatever, usually they get they like 
most of them love it because of the color of it. But the color reminds them of the scent too. I didn't have women tell me that if color had, if purple had a color, that would remind them of. Okay, and do you ever get people who ask for by, by, by color? Hey, can I get that purple, purple? <laughs> or, you know, can I get the purple? <laughs> <laughs> they say, can I get that? Can I get that good smell on? Right, with a good smell, I all of them. Now, um, being in the uh, in the, it's technically the beauty industry because yes. it is the you know perfume. It's predominantly female oriented. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult breaking in as a male? Did you get a lot of stereotypes? Was it kind of you know like, hey, I'm here to stay type thing? Well, you know what? I don't. I don't feel like my stereotype more so became from being a man. Okay. But, because I mean, even if you look at like the um, guy who created Victoria's Secret of Avon, it was men, you know, mm -hmm. so it's always men got a good eye for this type of stuff like that. But I mean, some people don't think you might know what you're doing just because, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know. When you don't I, look like you typically Yeah, do. a guy gives me per, uh, perfume or cologne, I'm kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you hit him with that. <laughs> you don't really know what you're doing, but at the same time, if you think about it, it makes sense. Right. You know, men know we wear perfume and cologne because men like to smell it. So why wouldn't we, yeah. you know, let a man say, hey, this is what we um, picking out. Um, with your starting starting of your um, of your perfume line, um, what what are some things that you would have for someone who's trying to break into the industry? If you had far, any advice, as far as business wise. Mm -hmm. With any business or just perfume business? Um, with the perfume business. Study, study it. I would say study it, and then, and then you know, actually, it's, I, I would say this applies to any business. You gotta study it, then you gotta study the market, then you gotta go where that market at. And then not even only that, you gotta focus on your presentation, and then you gotta focus on your professionalism too, and equality. Like those are all things that really matter. Then you gotta learn how to get vendors too. So. Okay, would you say that um, maybe packaging is something that's overlooked? Something that people underestimate. Packaging is, is very, yeah, because you know what it is when you when you asked me earlier about the typical guy that's on the street that's doing it. Mm -hmm. They don't really think about the packaging of it to me. You know, and that's one thing that actually sell your stuff because Absolutely. especially with something in the beauty industry. I mean if you handing out a bootleg CD or something like that, that's that's different. <laughs> you, you expect that. Right, but if you something that you go put on your body, you know, it's it's already looked at as okay. Um, so tell me some things that you've learned since being in the industry, um, some things that you've learned maybe starting out or you know that you've experienced along the way. One of the things definitely even if I had to give advice to anybody was um, learn your target market, then go where your target market at. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that my business coach told me too is that once you start to see like a pattern or you gotta pay attention to the people that's buying your stuff and then you gotta kind of go where they at like that. Um, you know, and that's to me that's great advice because that's just like somebody who work out. You can't put a pop machine in a gym. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not gonna really do nothing right there. You gotta put, you know, what's gonna fit in there, in there. And then once you learn your market, you kind of learn how to actually market to them like that. Okay. Um, what advice would you give um, other than uh, starting, you know, learning your market to somebody who's just in the industry, period? Now, if they're in the perfume industry, I would definitely say focus on your packaging. Your packaging and your marketing. I, I mean, the marketing is the number one key to me because it's more of a marketing business than the actual perfume Absolutely. business. But you have to really actually learn your craft. And as a matter of fact, I can say that that's the number one advice I give anybody. If you're creating something, you gotta really learn, like master your craft to the point to where there's really no question that can kind of get by you with nothing. Okay, so what other projects do you have coming up? I know you have your release party. Um, what else do you have? You have- uh, We have the candle line okay. coming out. That's the home um, fragrance. We got the candle line coming out. The candle line is gonna consist of all of these fragrances in a candle. Um, they'll be able to actually get it in uh, custom candles made also too, so. And then we're gonna have a, probably a few special limited edition types in the candles also. Okay. Um, cosmetic bags and women handbags. That's another thing that we actually go to um, focus and hone in on right there. Okay, and uh, what about your bottles? Are you doing anything special with your packaging bottles? You know what, this was my latest one, but for my next one, my next one, like typically I'll give you an example. That took me roughly about a year and a half to produce that okay. um, from creating the scent and everything like that. But the next one is probably going to take me almost probably a couple years because I'm a because you as you can see um, I, I that was the first one and actually that bottle I just actually changed that bottle but that was my first fragrance or whatever once I really started learning the packaging that was my second one and this is my third one so I try to get more unique each time but the next one is definitely going to be created from A to Z I'm gonna have an engineer. Um, you know, create it from okay. the drawing and then get it, you know, from A to Z, everything custom. Okay, uh, what are some things that you have um, 
like as far as your market, are you, are you traveling outside of Michigan? Do you have it, you know, online? Yes, Chicago, we actually do stuff there. Um, online, we're on a perfectperfume.com. We will be venturing out to other places also. So we definitely try to hit up Ohio, New York, even Atlanta too. I'm definitely adamant about getting a hair show down there in Atlanta somewhere. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. that's a big market for that. Okay, well definitely keep us posted. Love to, you know, attend some events and, and keep our eyes out on it. Do you have any questions for me as the, you know, the bunny hole? Okay, like, what got you into it and when did you start? Uh, what got me into blogging is the fact that I love to write. Okay. Um, I've always had a passion for writing and just talking. Okay. Clearly, you know, that's <laughs> that's what we do. Uh, uh, I started out just, you know, just something simple, something blogging, uh, you know, posting little stuff here and there. And then in February, that was in September, um, in February, it really transgressed over to complete an interview. Like I've done uh, Dominic Santana, which is uh, the um, Suge Knight from the new Tupac movie, uh, Kiki Wyatt, you know, we're associated with the URL brand in New York. So it's definitely, you know, things that we've been tapping into as far as the bunny hole and branding. It's just my love for writing and the passion for people, meeting people and getting to know people besides what the media allows us to see. That's really where it started. Okay. So that definitely sounds good. Now, even then, what do you think is the most important thing you learn business-wise when it comes to this? Okay. Business-wise, definitely um, to network. Network, network, network. I can't emphasize that enough. There's more than enough people out there who... Um, you know, you just give them the opportunity to, to speak and, uh, and you get to know them and you never know who you may run across. You never know what anybody is capable of or who um, who they may know, even there. Um, also from being in the business, I've learned not to share your ideas as much. I'm very open, I'm very talkative, so, you know, when I have an idea, I'll, I'll call my girl to say, hey girl, you know, I feel like this and this and this, but through trials and error, you've learned to not always be so open um, with everybody. You know, you have your select few, but then of course, you know, just don't go around just spreading your ideas like flowers, you know. Right. Right. <laughs> so now what do you think is the most, what's the most exciting moment for you since you started this? Um, like far as like it could be like from an interview that you had with somebody or just something you learned or what whatever um my most exciting would probably be the most recent that i had i had an interview with um elite noel and she actually came here um and she that's keisha cole's sister she also has a new single coming out and it was just exciting just to meet her and just to be able to connect with her and to experience her music and the type of person that she was. For me as a blogger, when you get to meet face to face with the people that you interview, it's a really eye-opening experience. It's a, it's a good experience. Okay. I was, I was still riding a little high off yeah. that <laughs> So what, what's next for the bunny hole? Uh, you know what, who knows where the bunny hole will go. <laughs> definitely working on um, a podcast, definitely working on a um, online magazine, as well as a media marketing company. Okay. So we're, we're working. Okay, so that's, that's good. So, yeah, it was definitely a pleasure having this interview with you. I learned a lot of stuff from you, too. So, yeah, about thank your you. brand. So, yes, yes. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So, yeah. Thank you for having me in the bunny hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I appreciate you taking that time to talk with me. You know, I love, like I said, I love networking. I love meeting new people and mm -hmm. learning more about them and why they started what they started. Not just, you know, you can buy from anyone mm -hmm. you know you can purchase from anyone but i like to know the backstory on why i'm supporting who i'm supporting okay so. yep definitely thank you a lot yeah thank you yeah <laughs> <I'm gonna> <laughs>